okay so in this video i'm going to show you how to use vdm brushes so first is like the usual method that you can find online anywhere but i'm also going to go through the basics so if you want to get the vdm brushes just go to blender download page and under release notes uh, you will be able to find uh, the demo file for this uh, vdm setup just download that file and open it up so once we have the zip file downloaded, uh, we can basically load the add-on inside of Blender. So go into your Blender and go to Edit. So inside the folder, you will see this kind of zip file that you can extract from. And then inside of this first folder, uh, you should be able to uh, see the add-on that you can install inside of Blender. Now to install any of the add-ons in Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then Install, and then just locate wherever the zip folder is, and then just open it up, and you should get the add-on in if you just search by its name. And once it is enabled, you should get. Uh, this option under tools so once we have this done we can now start working so to create VDM brushes just go to create uh, VDM brush and then you can also set the name of it and resolution for this uh, that's basically going to determine how good the texture comes out but usually 512 or 1024 are works fine but if it's, if it's something very high res with a lot of detail you can also go higher but that will just take more time to render so once we have this done now we go to uh, sculpt plane and we can just start making any of the shapes and once we are done and happy with the shape we can just go to render and it's going to render out that shape as a brush that we can then use in sculpt mode onto any object and add that particular detail so now if I add a cube subdivide it a few times and go to my draw brush choose the VDM that, that has just been created I can now draw on with it the resolution of this will depend on how subdivided your model is so the more subdivision means the more resolution you will get so for example with this high res I'm getting a much better kind of uh, output than I was getting before okay so this was like the first scenario now the second scenario is uh, let's say you might have uh, some models that you have purchased or uh, some models that you have worked on uh, for your clients or for your own free time and you would like to use them as brushes for your other projects to basically save time and not to do these steps again and again right so i'm gonna go to another example where i already have a model created and let's say for my new project i want to reuse the ears that i created for this character right now uh, usually i would just either uh, just boolean this mesh out of it and add it to my previous mesh but that's just something not reusable i just have to do this again and again it's much better to create an a, an asset library that contains all these VDM brushes that I can just uh, use uh, similar to how it works in ZBrush so to make this work I'm going to first go to my original model and I'm going to boolean out the ears so we can use it So any of the uh, VDM brushes that we do create are automatically saved to our temp folder. So again, this is the useful aspect of this. Uh, we just need to create it once and for our all our future projects, we would be able to reuse the same kind of meshes. We don't have to like uh, create, uh, drag all of those uh, meshes and basically it saves a lot of time. okay so now i'm going to add a cube to boolean out the ears and it can be any simple shape just as long as it get the, gets the result done yeah the, i'm just going into basic edit mode and editing out the shape so i get the ear uh, isolated correctly
yeah so once i'm done uh, just make sure you have a boolean tools enabled that just makes the workflow much faster if you don't go to edit preferences and under add-on search for bool and you should get these tools just enable these these make boolean operations much much faster you can hit control plus control minus control multiply and control divide to do this quickly and you can also go under the edit option in your object mode or edit mode to get these boolean options so right now i did control uh, multiply which gives us intersection and now i can basically uh, apply this modifier and uh, start working on this shape okay now i'm going to uh, select this ear and move it back uh, like move it in place where the plane is so we can basically uh, mess around with these meshes so to do this i'm going to select this ear and then uh, set its pivot to the center of mass so i can manipulate it easily and then just move it down rotate it if needed or scale it up or down if required and just place it to where i'm happy with it so basically I'm making sure that it's intersecting with the plane. Again the idea is to merge it with the plane so it's uh, it's good to have a small amount of intersection in between and once this is done uh, we can basically scale up our model because right now this is too small so I'm going to scale it up to make sure that it fits the texture size we need to make sure that it doesn't cross the boundary uh, it remains inside but it should be a little bit bigger so once we are close enough to the result that we need uh, we can basically uh, cut off the excess part that we don't need. I'm going to add a cube and basically subtract the part that we don't need. So uh, yeah, just place your cube, uh, select the cube and then the ear and then press Ctrl minus and you can basically subtract it out. Okay. Now basically we want to merge the ear shape with the plane that we have below and the reason for this is because we want to apply shrink wrap modifier to our VDM plane and to do this correctly it's better that it's a plane shape rather than uh, like this gives a good much better result than the other way around. So to do this, I'm going to create a cube uh, and just give it some small thickness and then I'm going to make sure that it's slightly bigger than the VDM plane and then I'm going to merge it with, with the ear. Once this is done, I'm gonna go and uh, go into edit mode of the VDM plane and I'm going to basically modify this mesh in a way that I can apply shrink wrap modifier and it will shrink wrap to my uh, ear shape. Right now it, this is flat so uh, shrink wrap will not work properly so just go into your proportional editing enable connected only and then start moving your vertices up uh, along the shape so basically it's encapsulating the entire shape so you want to make sure whatever shape you have is basically covering the shape the main shape below because once we add the shrink wrap it's going to wrap around this object so while keeping that in mind just spend some time uh, this should give you an idea on what you're supposed to do and then you can just uh, edit this accordingly Now I'm going to select the entire mesh and I'm going to press alt s to just inflate it out and then uh, yeah I'm just going to fill, fill in fix any of these gaps that I see and add a shrink wrap modifier to see how it looks. 
okay so right now we are getting some artifacts and depending on how complex your shape is you might get some artifacts so yeah we can fix this just go and edit your mesh according to where you saw those artifacts if it still doesn't fix it you can always use the snapping tool as well yeah so here i'm gonna go into snapping uh, change to face project and project onto individual surface and then just start uh, snapping a bunch of these So once I am done and I'm happy with how it looks, I'm going to hit apply and then I'm going to go into sculpt mode and start smoothing this shape out. We can do as much as we can while uh, without the shrink wrap added but once we are close enough we can just basically apply the modifier and make the smooth it out in um, in sculpt mode basically that's going to move a lot uh, move a lot of these vertices. Again I'm going to move this shape out so it's basically outside of the internal shape and then I'm going to shrink wrap it again so this is something I do instead of like using one shrink wrap I will use one two or three of these to get a good result because usually with one you won't get a good enough result you will get a lot of artifacts so it's better to use them in succession So once this is done, just apply it and then we can basically smooth out the shape again. But this time I'm also going to add multi-resolution modifier so we can get some more resolution to work with. So add a modifier, multi-resolution, subdivide it a few times and then just start editing out your shape. And in this particular part, you can also edit the shape as much as you like or you can keep the original if that's uh, what you're intending to use. And once we are done and happy with how it looks, so once we are done and happy with how it looks, we can basically render this brush out. And because it's 2048, it might take some time. Okay, now that it's baked out, I can basically hide this uh, mesh for now and then I can add whatever object uh, I want to uh, start sculpting on and uh, subdivide it a few times and then go into sculpt mode, go into draw brush and now with ears selected, I can draw on those ears uh, in any rotation in any size and then smooth out the difference that we get. and yeah basically with this way we can easily use any of the previous models that we have created or even um, models that you have might have purchased and then just break them down into small parts and then use them for your projects to basically save time uh, let me know what your thoughts are and if you like this video please like share and subscribe